Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a preview of the 8th Indian Infantry, a new division available in the upcoming Tribute to Italy DLC. As a disclaimer, Eugen has given me free access to the DLC so big thanks to them. Also please remember that this is an early preview and what you see may be subject to change. If you'd like to read the description on the right hand side feel free to pause but I'm going to be jumping straight on in. As usual, we'll get, be going through all of the units available, and then I will be putting together a quick deck. So let's start in the Recon tab. Pretty simple start here. The Willys HMG. It's a 50 cal Jeep. It's uh, standard stuff. Does have the very high optics, which is actually pretty good. Uh, but doesn't have any radio, so not the best sort of small armoured vehicle, really. Uh, but 6 available in A, 12 in B. Come in at one vet, you've only got one card of them. Moving on to the recce. The recce are your two-man standard squad with exceptional stealth and the very high optics. They do get an array of different transports. You've got the two-inch mortar carrier, uh, the MMG carrier which has a Bren and a Vickers, and then the standard universal carrier which has just the Bren. Uh, all of these are recon. Uh, they do have recon capability with very high optics which is actually pretty good. So they're actually quite nice to accompany these recce squads. It does, however, slow them down quite a bit, so it may not be useful at like the start of the game, for example, where you might want to use a faster transport. Uh, but then you can just bring in the Willys uh, truck anyway. Uh, but 4, 8, and 12 available throughout the phases. And then we move on to the Gurkha Scout. So the Gurkhas, we're going to see more of them in this division, but here's the first of them. The Gurkha Scout, they come 5 in A, 10 in B. They're a four-man SMG squad. Kind of lacking in utility though for a four-man squad. Uh, there's no, you know, smoke grenade. That'd be really, really nice if they had smoke. Uh, then they'd probably be a decent choice. But they are fanatical, uh, which is somewhat helpful for smaller squads. Being fanatical doesn't really help that much, uh, just because they're most likely going to be dead before they get pinned down. Regardless, they do have some interesting transports though. So let's take a look at this. There is a brand new transport, the AC uh, V. IP Mark IIA. Uh, this is an armoured personnel carrier with a Bren and a boys anti-tank rifle in the front of it. It's got 15 millimeters of frontal armour, 10 side, 10 rear, so it's pretty much impervious to light arms fire. And it does have very high optics, so actually a really nice recon vehicle uh, with the 80 km per hour off, oh, sorry, on road speed. 40 km per hour off-road speed. Uh, so pretty damn fast indeed, especially considering it does have uh, that optic capability. So whilst the armaments aren't going to be that fantastic, having that with you is still going to be very useful. So yeah, really awesome. And we're going to see the first of the turbines there as well, which is also really nice. All right, moving on, we've got the Indian Scouts. Even more turbines here. We've got the three Leonfields and the Leonfield Sniper variant. And these have the very high optics with the exceptional stealth again. Uh, but four-man sniper squads, very nice. And the availability is quite generous. Five in A, 10 in B, and 15 in C. They can also be brought in with the AC VIP. But there's only 12 of those available. So if you're going to bring them in the later phases, you might have to you know, up-vet your troops a little bit in order to accommodate the ACV. Uh, then there is the Scouts of Pia. We've seen these boys before four-man squad with a Piat. Actually kind of a nice sneaky Piat squad. Because they get the exceptional stealth due to being like a recon squad, um, the Piat there is kind of just acts like a standard Piat squad but has four men. Uh, so that is quite nice. Also they can use the ACV and the universal carrier. Next up we have the 75mm SP Auto Car M3. This is not the same as the American one. It comes with this 75mm gun on it uh, which is not that good i mean it's 90 mils of penetration it's the same penetration as like the main gun of a sherman it has 12 round per minute rate of fire so it could definitely be good at taking out like medium and maybe light armor and armored cars quite quickly but the he shells all right the 1.5 damage there with 12 round per minute rate of fire does mean that this can put down some damage onto infantry very well and also has a 50 cal, so that's really, really helpful. Furthermore, it does have radio, and it's actually the only unit in the entire recon tab that has radio. So 
I feel like these are going to be quite important to take uh, for that purpose, uh, as well as obviously being able to take on armored vehicles quite well. Their speed is, is generous as well with the 75 km per hour road speed and 55 km per hour off-road speed. Next up we have the Humber, 5, 9 and 18 available throughout the phases there. Uh, you get a lot of these in phase C if you want them, but they have a 37 mil gun with 70 mils of penetration. 7 round per minute rate of fire isn't really anything to write home about, but yeah, a standard armoured vehicle that could be pretty nice to have at closer ranges to support your infantry against sort of light armour and also half tracks. Um, availability on uh, these auto cars, by the way, is 3, 6 and 9. I'm not sure if I looked at that. There you go, that's your recon tab. Into the infantry tab, we have the defense group. Again, a unit that we've seen before. I believe these are available in the 15th Scots. Um, you get three landfills and two Brens, so they can put out some damage at a distance. Uh, one damage in total for the Bren. It's not fantastic, uh, but the availability is all right in the early game if you want some sort of throwaway units. Next up, we have the first of the Indian units in the infantry tab, the Indian Assault Pioneers. These have three Stens, a flamethrower, and some smoke grenades. So pretty much your standard Assault Pioneer squad. It's just they're Indian, and um, they have the Raider trait as well, which is quite nice. Um, this does help if you get stuck behind enemy lines. You don't get the suppression malice. Um, and also you get the extra stealth there as well. So these have exceptional stealth, which is quite something. Uh, so yeah, 9 available in A, 18 in B, 27 in C. For flamer units, that's quite a lot of availability. we got the Indian Engineer Leader. Again, they are equipped with these uh, really cool outfits. They've got turban there, like the hats and all these new uniforms and stuff. Really cool. Uh, but this guy has uh, two stens. They've got three Liam Fields and the TNT there. Again, Raider trait makes them exceptional stealth. For a leader, really kind of handy in the early game because uh, it means that you can kind of unload them in the middle of a sort of open ground area and they'll probably still be relatively hidden unless your opponent has a decent recon to spot them. So, yeah, pretty nice uh, leader for the early game. Then we have the Indian Rifles. So the best way to really look at these Indian rifles is to compare them to the British rifles. The British rifles are already in the game, of course. Uh, these have two Sten, seven Lee Enfields, and a Bren. But the Indian rifles, they have a Thompson, ten Lee Enfields, and a Bren. So they cost the same amount, but the Indian rifles, I would say, are significantly better at range due to the... Well, I say significantly, a little bit better at range <laughs> due to having the extra Lee Enfields. So their sort of 500 meter range damage is 1.5 because the 10 Lee Enfields plus the Bren for the Indian rifles. Um, so that's 0.3 more than the standard rifles. Uh, but their closer range suffers a little bit in comparison, but the Thompson is still decent, 0.5 damage. Uh, you're, you're getting the plus three back on the British rifles in that close range engagement. But generally, you're going to want to use these at the sort of mid to long range. So the Indian rifles kind of fit the role a lot better. You can get nine, 18 and 27. And there's six cards available in this division, uh, which I guess would be to be expected due to being the eighth Indian infantry. <laughs> so having lots of Indian rifles makes sense. Uh, their transports are just the Bedford trucks. Then we have the yeah the rifles, the British rifles. Again, same availability, 9, 18, 27, uh, with the Bedford truck there. Then we have the Gurkha rifles. The Gurkha rifles, these have two Brens, so even more damage at range. They do cost more, and they have less availability. So you can see they go 6, 12, and, and 18, but you that's because you're forced to bring them in at one vet. Their damage at close range is very good. Uh, like three Thompsons, 1.5 damage at close range, plus the Liam fields and the Brens helping you is a lot of damage. You know, that's 2.5 plus the 0.7 there, which is 2.2 damage, or sorry, 3.2 damage at the 100 meter range because Brens can fire within 100 meters due to being an automatic rifle. So there is that to consider. Um, these Gurkha's rifles are going to be pretty mean and they do have fanatical trait and their raider trait so they've got very good stealth and they don't surrender 
These boys are powerful, that's for sure. The transports are just Bedford trucks, and their AT option is the 100 meter range uh, gammon bomb. And moving on, we have the rifle leaders. Uh, these, again, we've seen before. They can come in with the carrier command, which is just a universal carrier with a Bren on it. Doesn't really have any other stats, no radio, no recon, nothing like that. And then there's the, the willies and the Bedford there for them. Six, three, six, and nine availability for these. Then the rifles of Pia. Uh, the rifles of Pia were in the 15th Scots, your option for longer range engagements really, because they have only longer range weapons like the Lee Enfields and the Brens. There's no submachine guns here. But the Gurkha's rifles are just so much better. And also the um, Indian rifles even can kind of almost match up to these as well now. So yeah, the rifles of Piet here are good uh, because they have the Piet and might still be worth taking a card of them. But there's definitely better options, I think, overall. Uh, either way, 9, 18, and 27 are, is your availability. Transport's only the Bedford. We have the Gurkha rifle leader here. Three Thompson M1A1s. The four Leanfields and a smoke grenade. It's actually quite a nice uh, leader squad. Quite a chunky leader squad. Seven men. Also having exceptional stealth. Also being fanatical. It's pretty damn good. Like having the utility of the smoke grenade is really, really handy. So it's going to be a tough choice between the engineer leader and the Gurkha's rifle leader. But I think the Gurkha's rifle leader would probably win out maybe in most cases. I'm um, not 1v1, obviously, because these guys have TNT. But in terms of like what a leader's there for, having the smoke grenade for utility, I think, is really important. And I do value that a lot. And uh, then we have the Indian rifle leader. These have the Thompson M1A1, the 5 Lee Enfields, and the Lee Enfield sniper as well there. Uh, again, transports are pretty standard. Just the Bedford, 3, 6, and 9 availability. If you'd like to have squads with snipers in them, as your leaders then that's fine but I wouldn't really recommend it because if a leader reveals itself by firing at the thousand meter range of the Lee Enfield it's most likely going to get shot back at and die um, which is obviously not what you want your leader be, to be doing <laughs> dying um, but yeah radio smoke layer does have the uh, radar trait there it does say smoke layer there I don't know if they actually have smoke um, yeah maybe they do like secretly I don't know anyway um, yeah, exceptional stealth on these units in the infantry tab is really, really nice because of these this Raider trait. I'm right, moving on to the tank tab. It's just a bunch of Canadian tanks. We've got the Sherman 5s. So these are available for 7 and 11. Forced to be brought in at one vet at least. Uh, it's your standard Sherman with the 100mm of frontal armor. Um, you got 75mm gun with 90mm of penetration. 50 cal, 230 cals, and the HE round does 1.5 damage. These will definitely pin down infantry pretty damn fast these days because I believe in the patch that's coming out with the Tribute to Italy DLC, um, in, or sorry, tank machine guns will be suppressing infantry more. Something to bear in mind. Then there's the Sherman 5 Commander, which is uh, also in this. It does have, I believe, a new set of markings on it which is pretty cool two available in a four available in b stats of the actual tank are exactly the same except from the fact that the leader gets a radio and moving on to the support tab there's gurkha's two inch mortars uh, two inch mortars unfortunately because they only have 540 meter range makes them have limited use but 6 12 and 18 availability Forced to come in at one vet. And then there's the Indian 2-inch mortar, which again, forced to come in at one vet. 6, 12, 18. Uh, same range, just different crew. And then there's the Indian Vickers HMG, which again, just a Vickers with an Indian crew. And these can also be brought in with the carrier commands, which are the universal carriers of the Bren. And then there's the Bedford there as well with the Willies. Also being a choice, 6, 12, and 18 available. Unfortunately, the Vicar is not that great. Like the 0.5 damage machine guns just don't really do all that much compared to something like an MG42. Uh, there is the Bedford supply trucks. There are three cards of these available. 
2, 4 and 6 availability. And then you have your commanders. So you've got your infantry commander, your British infantry commander. There's the Indian Dingo. And then there is a Canadian Command Sherman 5. So, yeah, interesting choices there. Moving on to the anti-tank tab. We have the Indian Pier, so Pier Squad uh, with Indians. And, yeah, standard stuff. 8, 6, 12, 18 availability. Can be brought in the willies. Uh, they do have exceptional stealth and the raider trait, so could be useful but Piat's notoriously unreliable due to their low accuracy <laughs> you're always always a coin toss with these unless you're going to go and up bet them which i wouldn't really recommend i mean you can recommend you can probably um get stars on them in game with leaders and commanders nearby but i wouldn't recommend up vetting them in the deck at least and we have the indian six pounder uh this is just a standard six pounder uh, with the APCR shells, mind you, 1000 meter range, 175 meter or millimeter penetration APCR shells, and then you've got your standard 115 millimeter, 1500 meter range uh, AP shell. You can be brought in with the Lloyd Carrier or the Bedford. Uh, the Lloyd Carrier, I believe, is faster off road, but uh, the Bedford faster on road, so just determine where you really are going to pull these. I would say in most cases you are probably going to pull these off-road to like the back sides of forests and stuff so having the extra speed off-road would actually be kind of useful. And then there's the Indian 17 pounder uh, which is a really nice gun the 170 millimeter of penetration. 45% accuracy is not as great as it probably could be but yeah, it's a it's a decent anti-tank option and will help you deal with the heavier armor that you find on the Axis side. Moving on to the anti-air. Pretty simple stuff here. You've got Canadian Crusader AA Mark IIs uh, which have the dual 20mm in the turret there. Pretty cool stuff. I always thought that these look really cool. And they're also kind of effective against infantry. There's, there's that to bear in mind. You can get 2, 4 and 8 in Phase C. And then there's the Indian Bofors, so Bofors manned by Indian crews, and they've got the Lloyd Carrier and Bedford for their transport options, 3, 6, and 9 availability. So, yeah, standard stuff. We've seen the Bofors before. Artillery. You've got your spotters. These are your British spotters with the Lanchester submachine guns, and they do have the smoke grenades there. Can make like spotters and uh, any of these two man squads you find in the artillery tab they can be good sort of like supplement recon if you're like lacking recon in your recon tab or the recon tab's quite expensive in certain decks but I don't think they're going to really be that useful uh, in this deck uh, but 3 and 6 availability only can be brought in with that jeep moving on we've got the artillery commander Standard stuff, seen these before. Two Stens, eight Lee Enfields, come in with the Bedford truck. 81 mil mortars, manned by the Indians. Uh, you can get four, eight, and 12 available of these. Uh, with the one star veterancy, which will help them kind of like reload faster. But yeah, they don't have radios, which is unfortunate. If these had radios, it would be an absolute game changer but they don't in this case. There's also the 107mm mortar, which is obviously a bit more powerful. Uh, 4, 8, and 12 availability of those for an extra 10 points. These might be a better choice than the 81mm mortars in phase A. Then for another 5 points on top of that, you got the 25 pounder, uh, which does have radio. And radio can be very useful, but I feel like the 25 pounder is not my favourite artillery piece ever. It kind of falls into the same category as like... 105 mil axis artillery where I just don't think the splash on the on the gun is that good when it lands uh, but 3, 6 and 12 availability for those you get a lot in the late game if you want them and these can only come with the Lloyd carriers and Bedfords bear in mind there is no supply truck here 
Uh, then we have the BL 4.5 inch 114 millimeter howitzer. This thing is a beast and it's only 80 points. Three availability in A, six in B, nine in C. I do kind of feel like the price on these might get adjusted because personally it feels cheap. Uh, but yeah, having three of these in A could be really big. And you can also bring them in with their own supply, the Matador supply. And they're not even that expensive when you're bringing in supply. It only takes them up to 120 points because the supply truck costs 40. Yeah, could be really, really good early on. And you get two cards of them as well. So technically you could bring in six of these in phase A, which would be <laughs> quite something. Anyway, moving on, we have the ACV IP um, as a spotter, artillery observer for off map. This comes with three charges of 140 more off map. If you're ever wondering how much an off map can fire, always look just under this picture. It says like 140 millimeter times three. And that's the number of times that you can fire the off map. So that's what you're going to be wanting to look for. Um, but yeah, in this case, reasonable off map, honestly, um, could be a decent option in phase A, which you're forced to bring it in with. All right, moving on to the air tab. We have the Spitfire, the R Mark 9, or sorry, Mark 11, <laughs> my bad. It's the recon variant. It doesn't have any armament, 35 points, very fast. Eh, not sure how useful it's going to be. Like, unfortunately, because it is, like, whilst it is fast, because it has a bad resilience, it's probably going to get shot down before it gets any, like, useful information. Also, fast recon is actually not necessarily good recon because you don't really have time to take in what it sees a lot of the time. Anyway, moving on, we have the Baltimore Mark V. This thing comes in with six 113 kilogram bombs. Uh, the Baltimore is actually a reasonably good bomber. Um, it does have quite a lot of 50 cals. It's got six of them. These are in the wings, so that technically they're for yeah they're forward facing. They can fire them at uh, oncoming aircraft. And it has the two on top there, and it's also got some Vickers Ks. Uh, that's in a turret. Where is that? I'm not sure where the Vickers Ks are. But either way, decently armed. Um, and the bombing, the amount, like the payload is not too bad. Uh, it goes 2, 4, and 7. Uh, these could be used reasonably well in the early game, I think. There is a Hurricane Mark IV. Uh, this has the 30 cals, so you're not going to be shooting down any, any enemy aircraft with it. Just two 30 cals. Uh, but 100 point fighter bomber to 227 kilogram bombs 385 kilometer per hour speed and it does have medium resilience because i believe uh the hurricane mark 4 was it metal so yeah either way three six and nine availability 227 kilogram bombs will do the job and uh, could be a nice option early game to help you break through some support weapons and uh, kill squads of infantry then there's the Boston Mark IV. Uh, the Boston is slightly faster than the Baltimore. And in this case has a little bit of a better payload. Like the four 227 kilogram bombs, I think are generally better than six 113 kilogram bombs. Uh, just because the spread is smaller and the damage is higher. So they have much better lethality. Uh, the M2 Brownings in the nose, you've got the browning turret on the top there and there's another turret i can't remember where that is either way <laughs> plenty of these available two four and seven and two cards so technically you could bring in 14 of these in phase c which is actually not that expensive either at 105 points a pop there is the hurricane mark IV with the 40 mil vickers guns underneath the wings these gun pods i'm not sure how effective these are going to be i haven't had a chance to try them yet but uh availability is one two and four 80 mils of penetration is enough to side shot something like a panther and since it's a hurricane they're not 
terrible on the agility. Like, it does say bad agility, but because they're quite slow, the turning circle's not too bad. So I feel like you might be able to get some decent job done with these, and they also still have that medium resilience. So, yeah, could be a nice AT option. I might give them a go. Then we have the uh, Spitfire Mark V B Trop. This is available 4 in A, 8 in B, and 12 in C. So there you go. Uh, it's got the two 20 mil Hispanos and the four 30 cows. Uh, 590 kilometer per hour speed there. These are pretty decent fighters. Uh, they can definitely hold their own. And um, yeah, just a, a good option. And then you've got the Spitfire LF Mark 9C, uh, which is slightly faster uh, for an extra five points. Also, availability is a, a little lower. So, you know, it's faster, costs more. Lower availability. I think the Spitfire Mark 5B is probably going to be a best bet. But, I mean, these are still okay. 610 km per hour speed. Still have the very good agility. Spitfires are just great. And they look absolutely gorgeous. I mean, just look at all the different camos. If I just quickly click through them. On all these, I mean, the Hurricanes as well. Beautiful stuff. And then we got another Spitfire here. The uh, LF Mark 8C which is, I think, the same as the one that you get in the New Zealand division. The two, four, and seven available. One 227 kilogram bomb. Two 113 kilogram bombs. Really nice fire bomber this is for 520 or 545 kilometer per hour speed. Significantly faster than the Hurricane. You are paying that extra 40 points, of course. The Spitfire uh, Mark 8 also has the 220 mil, so that's really nice as well. Really decent payload on this. And there's your lot. That's uh, pretty much everything. Nothing interesting to really look at in the defenses. So, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and put together a quick deck. So we'll start again in the recon. You don't need the Willys HMGs. I'll probably take some of these Recce. And I'm probably going to take, I think, some Indian Scouts in Phase A. I uh, will bring in the Indian Scouts with the ACV IP. And then I'm going to bring in Reki in B with the 2 inch carriers, I think. Because the 2 inch carriers can really be nice as sort of mortar support in like cover, where you can like provide a quick smoke wall for your troops. And you can also just like use them indirectly to fire at um, enemy troops out of line of sight, which is kind of nice. Uh, so yeah, you drop off your recce where you need to leave the recon, and then you use this more offensively. That's what we're going to do. Um, Scouts of Pia could also be a nice choice here, but I'm definitely going to be bringing in the 75mm SP auto car, and we're going to bring those in A. And then I'm also kind of tempted to bring in some Humber Mark IVs. I think this could be pretty useful uh, later on. Uh, to help out. So I'm going to do that for now. I might switch things around, but yeah, having the Humber Mark IVs there seem decent enough value. And the availability is like almost too good to not capitalize on. Right, infantry tab is going to be pretty simple, I think. We definitely take both the cards of Gurkhas. And I'm probably going to take them in B and see where they're going to be most useful. Um, they could be good early game, but I would only really suggest bringing in the Gurkha's Rifle in the early game if you're making like a Vanguard or a Maverick deck. For a balanced deck, I think having the power later is better to kind of like overwhelm and then you just like go for the trades early with like cheaper infantry. So like we're going to bring in Indian Rifles here for sure. In terms of leaders, I'm just going to try and work this out. I think we're going to bring in the Gurkha Rifle Leader in Phase A. And then we'll bring in the Rifle Leader, the Standard Rifle Leader, in Phase B. Accompanying our Phase C, we're going to have, I think, the Indian Field Engineers in Phase C. I'm going to do Indian Assault Pioneers in Phase B. 
So that's going to sort basically our phase A and phase B out completely. The nice thing about these Indian field engineers, just like normal field engineers, is the availability is crazy. So you're pretty much getting like all of these TNT squads that can just delete or like win against other any other infantry squad at close range other than other infantry squads that have TNT and potentially Molotovs. Because Molotovs against five man squads generally the squad will if like the squad that throws the molotov has high dps this squad might die before it even throws its he so bear that in mind uh it could be that the counter to it but in the early game not really gonna invest too much in the close range engagement now i think about it though it could be worth bringing in the indian assault pioneers in phase a now i think phase b is just better I don't want any rifles there. I think we just do Indian rifles. And I'm going to bring them in all up vetted. I'm going to push it like so. The three cards of Indian rifles in phase A. Don't have any close range AT options though. Which is something I'm worrying about. Might be tempting to bring in the scouts of Pia instead to sort of accompany the troops in phase A. Maybe I can just sneak in another card for now. Let's do that. We'll just add them in. I can always take them back out again if I run out of space. I think I'm just going to do this. We're going to do A, B, and C Shermans. In the support tab, we're going to take probably just the Dingo. And there's nothing else I really want here other than supply. Anti-tank tab. Definitely going to want plenty of these 17-pounders. I'm going to bring in 2 in B with the up bet. We're going to bring 6 in C. And I might do 2 in A as well. 17 pounders are super important. Since I'm bringing in these 17 pounders, I'm going to upvet the 6 pounders in A. I guess I could technically bring in the Indian Piats supplement, but no, we're going to do more 6 pounders in B. Uh, anti air. Pretty simple. It's up vetted. Bofors. Kind of tempting to bring in eight Crusaders in phase C. <laughs> These could be really useful for dealing with infantry in the late game. So it's tempting to bring them. But I think up vetted Bofors is just too good. Now, artillery is pretty simple. I am going to do phase A, 114 mils, and then we're going to do phase C, oh sorry, phase, let's do phase B, 114 mil with the Matador supply trucks. I will bring an off map, and I'm going to bring in some mortars. So we're probably going to need phase A supply and we're going to need phase B supply. We're already out of points on the activation. So now we've got to find points. <laughs> uh, let's see, where could I remove stuff? I think we take out one of these Indian rifles. That gives us back three points. And then that allows me to pop in at least another supply truck in here. And then in the air tab, I do want to try out these hurricanes. I might bring one in the early game. It could be pretty useful, I think, for taking out medium armor. 
And then we're going to bring in a card of Spitfires. There is definitely use for bombers in this deck, but I'm not sure if I'm going to focus on it at the moment because we're very focused on artillery quite early on as well. And the other way I could do it is maybe remove something out of the recon tab. Like the Humber Mark IVs might not be necessary. Or I could potentially move the Indian Scouts to B. But then the Scouts of Pia are going to be accompanying my infantry anyway, so we kind of need that separate separate infantry. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I'm really going to change much, to be honest. I, I think we could maybe take out an AT option here. If I take that out and then just unvet, well, yeah, unvet the 17 pounders, that would leave me a slot for bombers. In which case, I could maybe bring in some more phase A bombers, I think, would be the best bet. Just like a couple of Bostons in phase A. And yeah, I think we'll just leave it at that. So we got like a strong early game air force to supplement sort of a weak ground force and then I basically made it so it kind of transitions into the elite infantry plus abundance of 17 pounders to back it up with the Sherman 5s and you got the artillery catching up with you as well. Yeah, I think I feel like it's going to be a very potent phase A with the uh, off map there plus these aircraft plus the artillery you can get in and then limited amount of infantry and stuff as well. I'm going to probably have to mess around with this deck quite a lot, but that's where I'm going to leave it for today. We'll name that the 8th Indian Infantry. That's a job well done. So a very interesting deck, I think. Um, it's, it's cool to see the Indians and the Gurkhas in the game. Uh, I'm happy to see them added. Um, there's some cool sort of outfits and uniforms in this DLC and I think this is one of the divisions that really like helps it show just a little bit more like how much effort's been put into like the infantry models and stuff is really really cool uh, the new camos and stuff on some of these vehicles is really nice as well yeah I'm looking forward to trying this out I really am but that is it from me hopefully you guys have enjoyed this look at the 8th Indian Infantry do remember that I am going to be streaming Still Division 2 this Thursday, 8pm, and we're going to be playing the new Tribute to the Liberation of Italy DLC live, so make sure to come along on my Twitch channel. Uh, you'll be able to find a link in the description. Also make sure to just subscribe if you want to see more Still Division 2 content, of course. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah,